in the previous part, we were mainly looking at how um, we can assemble lipid around a protein. In this part, we will be looking at um, how we consider ligands, water, and salt or ions in the box, in a simulation system or simulation box. So here, so let's remind ourselves, we have our protein, um, what we can assemble in a lipid, and now you know the rest of the space is vacuum. And as we know, protein are not interacting in vacuums, right? They are in a solvated and in solvated environment, and therefore we need to put them into a box of water. Um, so we can put water in the box. That is fine. Um, there are several water parameters that you can use. You can have it as um, three-point charge. So tip three P, for example, you can have it as um, a three-point. So hydrogen, oxygen, and water and with some an with angles and partial charge around it, you kind of tip 4p, where one of the water parts is um, acts as a dummy, so you get a four-point charge, and many other water models, such as SPC, or even some polarizable water models, etc. But it is very important to do solvate the box. The standard is tip 3p. Sometimes it's not the most well-behaved, but it works for most of the system when you would like to you know, just solvate the box. The other thing you might want to consider is what type of iron would you put in a box? You know, you have an option of sodium or potassium. You know, if you run a simulation with potassium channel, you might want to um, go for potassium iron because some sodium might block the pore, for example. And, and you might see weird behavior of iron movement along the, the, the pore. Of course, you need a counter iron, and it's very important that you have a box which has neutral charge in neutral net charge, or otherwise the, the charge calculation um, by the PMA would be um, rather off and, and the box might explode during the simulation, i.e. the force between two particle might just be too strong and stretch and snap and break the thing. The other part that we need to consider about is um, where does the ligand bind to the protein? And this is very important. And the most common technique that is being used is called docking, where we take a static structure, a crystal structure, and we, um, we, we draw a grid space. So let me draw a structure of a system. Let's say I have a protein. And I would draw a grid space around here, da, 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 where I have a ligand of my interest. Let's put a diamond here. And I would. Um, use the electrostatic profile and Van der Waals to sample rigidly, you know, with some rotation of the bond, sample some bond rotation, but I won't be running any simulation over a period of time for this to find where and how I could fit um, my um, diamond onto the protein. And this is what we call rigid body docking. It doesn't sample the energy landscape along the pore, right? So it just rigidly put the ligand onto the binding site. So to me, I would use that as my first approximation when I would like to find where the ligand is and then run simulation to refine my, my binding site afterwards. What you get here is an enthalpy of binding. So you get a static binding delta H, not delta, you know, how, how, what is the number of hydrogen bonds it could form and how tight it might sit in the binding site and some ranking score of how suitable it is as it stick onto the binding site. Now we will go come across um, these electrostatic surface as its sample using APBS calculation in our practical, but you know it is a very nice thing to have a look when you would like to see well where is ligand approximately going to bind to the ligand. So you just use the method called docking, and this is probably the term you will hear quite often in drug design and drug discovery as a first approximation to get the binding site. Then you can refine the binding site. And you, what you usually see is that these recapitulate the, the drug binding site you obtain in crystal structure really, really well. And when you run simulation, you get a very stable binding of a drug in the binding site. And yeah, so now we've got everything, right? Protein, lipid, water, iron, and drugs. So now in the next one, let's put this in a simulation. <laughs>